Anubis is one of the most prominent and mystical Egyptian gods. As a god of mummification and the afterlife, as well as the patron god of lost souls and embalmers, Anubis is one of the oldest gods of Egyptian mythology. It is believed that he originated from a much older jackal god, Webbavet, with whom he is often confused. In the eyes of the ancient Egyptians, the version of Anubis had always been an ever-present god in the afterlife. Anubis also had an important role in the Egyptian pantheon due to his ability to serve as the bridge between life and death. As the guardian of the cemetery, he often appears as the jackal wearing a collar decorated with magical inscriptions and holding a flail or whip as a sign of authority. Let's explore some more about his symbolic animal. Jackals were associated with death because they lurked around cemeteries and would eat decomposing flesh. Therefore, by making Anubis the patron deity of jackals, the Egyptians hoped to protect the bodies from being devoured. When it comes to the color black, it represented the fertile soil of the Nile that was needed to grow crops. This means that the Egyptians believed that the color black symbolized good fortune and rebirth. It is worthy of note that Anubis possessed shape-shifting capabilities which show one of his side as a trickster god. Greeks saw in him a god similar to Hermes, who guided the souls to afterlife, and thus the pairing got named Hermanubis. He also became associated with Charon in the Greco-Roman period and Saint Christopher in the early Christian period. We may say that only Anubis knew what lay after death, Therefore, he was the one that instructed the ancient Egyptians on how they should embalm and bury their dead in order to secure safe passage in the afterlife. This was seen in the ancient Egyptian book, The Book of the Dead, but more about that later in the video. Like many ancient Egyptian deities, Anubis assumed different roles in various contexts and we'll explore each of them. But before we continue, Consider liking and subscribing if you want more content like this. When it comes to etymology, Anubis is a Greek rendering of this god's Egyptian name. Before the Greeks arrived in Egypt, around the 7th century before Christ, the god was known as Anpu or Inpu. The root of the name in ancient Egyptian language means a royal child. Inpu has a root to Imp which means to decay. The god was also known as the first of the Westerners, lord of the sacred land, and many more. As his various epithets make it clear, Anubis was central to every aspect of an individual's death experience in the role of protector and even stood with the soul after death as a just judge and guide. Scholar Geraldine Pinch writes the following. Anubis helped to judge the dead, and he and his army of messengers were charged with punishing those who violated tombs or offended the gods." End quote. When it comes to family, Anubis's mythos was inconsistent. Initially, it was believed that Anubis was the son of Ra and Hesat, who served as the god of the dead. As the cult and worship of Osiris grew over time, Anubis's origin got molded into the new light of mythological patterns. The second origin story can be traced to the second generation of gods and goddesses during the Middle Kingdom of Egypt. Here, Anubis's parents are the god Osiris and the goddess Nephthys. It all begins when Nephthys plays a deceitful game on Osiris by posing as his wife's sister, the goddess Isis. The result of her deceit produces a child who would later be known as Anubis. After the birth of Anubis, Isis pardons her sister Nephthys and decides to raise him as her own child. When it comes to mythology, 
despite being one of the most ancient and one of the most frequently depicted and mentioned gods in the Egyptian pantheon, Anubis played almost no role in Egyptian myths. Depicted as a protector of graves as early as the first dynasty, Anubis was also an embalmer. By the Middle Kingdom, he was replaced by Osiris in his role as Lord of the Underworld. One of his prominent roles was as a god who ushered souls into the afterlife. Anubis was seen as Osiris' right hand who assisted Osiris in the judgment of the souls of the dead. It is worth saying that, in ancient Egypt, mummies were embalmed with raisins and other sweet-smelling spices so that they would be satisfactory to the deities. Anubis checked each mummy with his well-honed nose for the required odor of sanctity. In the Book of the Dead, the deceased says, I have washed myself in the water wherein the god Anpu washed when he had performed the office of embalmer and bandager. And elsewhere the deceased is told that Anpu, who is upon his hill, hath set thee in order and he hath fastened for thee thy swattings, thy throat is the throat of Anubis, and thy face is like that of Anubis. Anubis was also known as the guardian of the scales. The crucial scene describing the wading of the heart in the Book of the Dead shows Anubis performing a measurement that determined whether the person was worthy of assessing the realm of the dead the underworld known as Duat. By wading the heart of a deceased person against Maat, her truth, who was often described as an ostrich feather, Anubis dictated the fate of souls. Souls heavier than that of a feather would be devoured by Amit, a demon known as the devourer of the dead. And souls lighter than a feather would ascend to a heavenly existence. The most famous story about Anubis is when he helped Isis during the embalming process of Osiris' dead body. He wrapped the body in cloth and completed a ritual known as the opening of the mouth. This ritual ensured that the mummified person's senses would still work in the life to come. During the embalming process, Osiris' body was kept in the Wabet, or place of embalming. Set, Osiris' murderer and older brother, devised a plan to desecrate the body parts in order to complete his victory. Him seeing that Anubis left the Wabet every night, Set made a plan. He transformed himself into Anubis and stole Osiris' body. The ploy was uncovered by Anubis and he set out to catch Set and recover the stolen body parts. Set, in an attempt to scare off Anubis, transformed into a bull, but Anubis wasn't impressed. He caught Set, castrated him and made him imprisoned. Set was persistent and after escaping the prison, he gave another try. This time he turned into a great cat and tried stealing the body parts again. Nevertheless, his plan failed again and Anubis, as a sign of punishment, branded him with hot iron. This myth is believed to explain the origin of leopard spots. Set's final attempt made him lose his life. Anubis, after catching Set again, flayed his skin and set his body ablaze. After enrobing the flayed skin, Anubis snuck into the Set's camp and decapitated his entire army with a single slash of his sword. Set's army was killed in the 18th gnome of Egypt, where a reddish mineral makes the land appear stained with blood. From an interesting passage in the Golden Ass of Apuleius, Book 11, who describes the procession of Isis, we read the following. Immediately after these came the deities, condescending to walk upon human feet, the foremost among them rearing terrifically on high his dog's head and neck, that messenger between heaven and hell 
displaying alternatively a face black as night and golden as the day. In his left the caduceus, in his right weaving aloft the green palm branch, his steps were closely followed by a cow, raised into an upright posture, the cow being the fruitful emblem of the universal parent, the goddess herself, which one of the happy train carried with majestic steps, supported on his shoulders. By another was borne the coffin containing the sacred things and closely concealing the deep secrets of the holy religion. Let's conclude this video with a quote from Carl Jung who says that death is an important interest especially to an aging person. A categorical question is being put to him and he is under an obligation to answer it. To this end, he ought to have a myth about death, for reason shows him nothing but the dark pit into which he is descending. Myth, however, can conjure up other images for him, helpful and enriching pictures of life in the land of the dead. If he believes in them, or greets them with some measure of credence, he is being just as right, or just as wrong as someone who does not believe in them. But while the man who despairs marches toward nothingness, the one who has placed his fate in the archetype follows the tracks of life and lives right into the death, both to be sure remain in uncertainty, but the one lives against his instincts, the other with them. This is it for today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for rebuilding Olympus.